from three major corporations controlling the music industry and signing your favorite artist, a creepy AI found out to be sentient back in the 2010s, to why Family Guy clips are destroying the next generation. All this and more. Hey, Ariel here for the Book of Alice channel. I hope you guys are all having a great day so far. If it's been going downhill, hopefully this half hour or so is able to distract you. Remember, this is all in good fun. In this video, we go over some obscure theories found all across the internet. Some are creepy and others are more wacky. If you enjoy long form content like this, consider subscribing to the channel as this is part of a series that will continue if you want to stick around. Also, I have an Instagram and Twitter if you would like to follow. I want to have this as a backup in case these videos are ever taken down. It doesn't hurt. Anyways, let's get into this iceberg. The big three music companies. Now think about your favorite musician from any genre. That could be hip hop, rock, or even an indie artist you thought was independent. Well, if they are so much relevant, they are most likely signed under either of these three large music conglomerates. Those being Sony Music, Warner Music Group, or Universal Music Group, the biggest of them all. Let's take a look at some of the labels Universal Music Group owns. They have Capitol Records, Def Jam, Interscope, Motown, Republic Records, and many more, which have tons of A-list artists, ranging from Taylor Swift and Drake to Bad Bunny and Eminem. Warner Music Group has signed artists like Ed Sheeran and Cardi B, and Sony Music Group has Travis Scott, Harry Styles, and once had Michael Jackson, the King of Pop which came with lots of controversy at the time, when Michael was trying to end his contract with them. The companies take advantage of them. They really do. And Sony... <laughs> Sony, be being a... You know, being the artist that I am um, at Sony, I, I've, I've generated several billion dollars for Sony. They, they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing, and they never thought that this performer, myself, would outthink them. We can't let them get away with, the, with what they're trying to do, because now I'm a free agent. I just owe Sony one more album. It's just a box set, really. And Tommy Mottola is a devil. All this to say that these three companies really have a monopoly over the music business, and this is where the conspiracy of it comes into play. Because who's to say that they are not all working with one another to push an agenda, like many other artists have come out to speak against their record labels and talk about how toxic the music industry really is, being pushed to do something they don't want to do. These companies own hundreds of labels, which can be used for influence and power. Germs aren't real. This entry very well explains itself. It is the belief that germs aren't real and that they are simply a theory yet to be proven, pushed by Big Pharma for the sake of profit, because healthy patients don't make money. Now, the germ theory of disease is the currently accepted scientific theory for many diseases. It states that microorganisms known as pathogens, or quote-unquote germs, can lead to disease. These small organisms, too small to be seen without magnification, invade humans, other animals, and other living hosts. Their growth and reproduction within their hosts can cause disease. Some refuse to believe this, though, and point to studies that don't blame germs as the sources of these diseases disease, leaving us with an important question. What causes disease then, if not germs? Well, some believe that the disease does not come from the outside into our bodies, but rather that virus or bacteria grows from the inside and that they are not the cause of disease, but rather the result of it. Blaming things such as outbreaks and epidemics on our reaction to adaptation to a new toxic substance introduced to us via food, new technology, air, or water. Some explain that the Spanish flu came as a result of the introduction of power grids in largely populated areas and not because of germs, explaining that the symptoms like fevers and chills come from our bodies, merely adapting to something new. CERN Ritual Hoax The CERN Ritual Hoax is a video that claims to be recovered footage and shows a group of people performing an alleged occult ritual on the grounds of the CERN Particle Physics Research Facility in Europe. The mob is shown in the video surrounding a statue of Shiva, the Hindu god, and ostensibly sacrificing a lady by statue. The person who was recording the situation yells and bolts away as the video comes to an end. 
The video became well known in August 2016 as a result of several CERN conspiracy theories. Later, CERN stated in an FAQ that the movie was quote-unquote fantasy and that the behaviors it showed were against the organization's ethical standards. According to a spokesman for CERN, the video was a prank and no one was actually harmed. CERN stated that the mock ritual depicted in the video was performed without any official permission and that the organization, quote unquote, doesn't tolerate this kind of spoof as it can give rise to misunderstanding about the scientific nature of our work. What do you guys think? Is this an excuse or what? Interesting note is that many believe that CERN's Hydron Collider is responsible for Manila fix as well. Businesses are purposely understaffed. Apparently, many claim that after applying to dozens of positions that are clearly vacant, they never hear back. There's not a worker shortage as tons of people are looking for jobs, so what's causing this? Some believe that this is artificially done by many franchises to avoid spending on customer service. Businesses have figured out that they could get away with minimal efforts during the pandemic and people would still be willing to spend money with them. It's a win-win for the companies as they get to work that staff they already have extra harder while paying less people to get the job done. Some have even noticed that while traveling abroad to developing countries, they received better customer service than they did in the United States. Greater Sin Theory This theory puts forth the idea that some sins are worse than others in the Christian faith, and this may apply to other Abrahamic religions as well. Basically, for some sects of Christianity, all sins are treated equally, and they are taught that in front of God's eyes, all sinners will be punished the same way, by going to hell. Though this theory says that this is wrong, and that there will be different levels of punishment depending on the sins you have committed in life, a more justice-based system. Some even use the scripture of Proverbs to back this up. According to the book of Proverbs 6:16 6, through 19, there are seven things that God hates, but no punishment is specified for them. However, it is clear from scripture that God views sin differently and assigns different punishments for sin based on its severity. But this doesn't take into account the New Testament and other teachings in the Bible. Malthusianism. Malthusianism is the belief that population growth can outperform the linear increase in the supply of food and other resources, leading to reduced living standards and a population decline, known as a Malthusian catastrophe. This can happen when population growth exceeds agricultural production, causing poverty, famine, and even war, and resulting in a reduction in population size. Malthusianism has been associated with various political and social movements, but it is usually used to refer to those who advocate for population control, which we have previously covered before on this channel. Greenwashing Green PR and green marketing are deceptively utilized to convince the public that an organization's products, objectives, and policies are environmentally beneficial. This practice is known as quote-unquote greenwashing, a type of advertising or marketing spin. Companies that purposely engage in greenwashing communication tactics frequently do so in an effort to separate themselves from environmental mistakes made by them in the past or their suppliers. An example of greenwashing is when an organization spends significantly more resources on advertising being green than on environmentally sound practices. Greenwashing can range from changing the name of a label on a product to evoke the natural environment, for example on a product containing harmful chemicals, to multi-million dollar campaigns that portray highly polluting energy companies as eco-friendly, but in reality they don't practice what they preach. You would think advertising regulators would be all over this trying to stop it, but it has gone under the radar by so many. Starbucks debuted a lid with a built-in drinking straw in 2018, in response to growing calls to ban plastic straws, which included more plastic by weight than the previous straw and lid combined, once again pandering to consumers. Embassy of Heaven The Embassy of Heaven was a 90s religious movement with Christian roots that aimed to break away the status quo and was centered in state in Oregon. Its followers deny any links to what they refer to as quote-unquote worldly governments and declare themselves to be literal citizens of the kingdom of heaven. The company issues its own license plates, business permits, auto title certificates, and identification documents like passports and driver licenses. Craig Douglas Fleshman, sometimes known as Pastor Paul Revere, is the organization's head 
and a former computer systems analyst for the state of Oregon. Allegedly, Glenn Stoll, who falsely holds himself as a quote-unquote lawyer and claims to have spent extensive time researching the tax rules, is another person who has previously been affiliated with the group. However, he is not a member of or licensed with any state or federal bar. The organization is allegedly set up to evade paying taxes, according to federal prosecutors. Despite claiming to be lawyers, none of its leaders have a legal education or a bar exam pass. In early 2021, Glenn Stoll entered into a plea agreement. The agreement, dated January 15, 2021, has Stoll pleading guilty to conspiracy to defraud the United States and evading the payment of federal income taxes. Elon Musk says credentials. For a long time, this was considered a conspiracy and most of the people bringing this theory up were shoved away and or silenced as quote unquote haters, though recent findings have confirmed this theory. The viral tweet that brought this to the mainstream states, someone has to say it. Elon Musk has lied for 27 years about his credentials. He does not have a bachelor's in physics or any other technical field, did not get into a PhD program, dropped out in 1995, and was illegal. To clarify, he was illegal in the United States for a while. Later, investors quietly arranged a diploma, but not in science. In the case Eberhard v. Musk, 2009, San Mateo County Superior Court, he was ordered to provide information on his educational career, and taking a look at his degree, he has a Bachelor of Arts, not Physics, as he has falsely stated before. Even the whole Master's and PhD program thing he claimed to have worked towards aren't true, as there is no evidence of this ever happening. Here is a video of someone confronting him about his education. Watch how he responds and base your belief upon that. If the goal is to start a company, I would say no point in finishing uh, college. In, in my case, I had to, otherwise I'd get kicked out of the country. Yeah. Uh, th that was important. But well, you um, went on and got a master's degree as well, right? Um, I, I, I came out to Silicon Valley to do a PhD at Stanford in applied physics and material science mm -hmm. to work on um, ultra capacitors for use in electric cars. And that's what I was going to do. And then I started to put that on hold to start a company. But since I already had my under, undergrad, I could then get an H-1B visa and that kind of thing. So the H-1B visa requires uh, a degree. If that wasn't the case, I probably would have just stopped education sooner. Did you not go to Wharton for...? Yeah, yeah. I did du dual undergrad in physics and, I... and, and business at Wharton. I see. What are your opinions on this? Oxfordian theory. Shakespeare's plays and poems, according to the Oxfordian theory, were actually written by Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. Oxfordian arguments mainly rely on timeline allegations. Followers look for parallels between scenes in Shakespeare's plays, sonnets, and lengthier works to events in Oxford's real life. The Oxfordian argument also relies on the fact that no plays credited to Oxford's name have survived. Despair Code the Despair Code is a theory that originated on 4chan slash x slash board, which aims to make people who believe in it feel depressed about the meaning of life. The Despair Code alleges that a specific noise, number, image, or phrase can be used to activate depression sensors in individuals controlled by the Illuminati or another unknown higher power, leading them to commit unalive. I'm using a different word for YouTube, of course. Climate change not reported. This entry puts forth the idea that climate catastrophes are not being reported as a result of our pollution, and sometimes not reported at all due to the negative impact it would have on advertisers. For example, the drought in China that is not being reported or brought to light enough. Many water reservoirs are empty, leading to many dead crops that feed millions of people. As China is the leading producer in grains, this will eventually lead to world hunger. How long do we have until climate change is irreversible? Well, for the past few decades, it has been predicted that humanity is approximately 10 years or less away from reaching a point of catastrophe or a tipping point at which greenhouse gas emissions will cause irreparable damage to the planet. Hebrews to ends wake up black America. The Hebrews to ends, I'm going to refrain from saying the actual title, but this is because of the new YouTube policy and I'm trying to stray away from ever putting my channel in danger. Either way, this film was mentioned in a tweet by Brooklyn Nets NBA basketball player Kyrie Irving in October 2022. The film promotes the idea that African Americans are the true Israelites according to the Bible and pushes to expose the quote-unquote fake white Jewish people. 
in two news conferences after he made this tweet, Irving refused to apologize and declined to disavow anti-Semitism or the Hebrews to Ends film. On November 3rd, 2022, the NIT suspended Irving without pay. After his suspension, Irving tweeted an apology via Instagram and agreed to donate $500,000 to unspecified causes and organizations that combat hate. The Anti-Defamation League, ADL, rejected Irving's $500,000 donation, though, and the group's CEO, Jonathan Greenblatt, said that Irving had failed at almost every stop along the way to do the right thing, apologize and condemn anti-Semitism, and added, We were optimistic, but after watching the debacle of a press conference, it's clear that Kyrie feels no accountability for his actions. In November 2022, major American Jewish organizations, including the ADL, American Jewish Committee, and Jewish Federations of North America petitioned Amazon to stop distributing the Hebrews to Ends film and the book from its platform, writing, continuing to platform this film and other clearly hateful content, Amazon is knowingly and willingly propagating anti-Semitism. Amazon CEO Andy J.C. later announced that the company would refuse to pull the film or book from its website. The book has become a number one seller in Amazon's religion and spirituality category. The company maintained that the film had been reviewed prior to being made available on its site, declining to provide the details of that review. The Moon Was Built There's a theory that puts forth the idea that the moon that orbits Earth was built on purpose by an alien life force. Evidence presented refers to the hollow moon hypothesis that states that Earth's moon is either all hollow or otherwise contains a substantial interior space. The massive crater is created from within and not from asteroids or any outside contact. Some believe that it is the only real planet apart from the sun and earth, explaining why we haven't set foot anywhere else but the moon. We can't get past it. Family Guy clips are destroying your brain. This is a reference to those TikToks that are dedicated to posting random Family Guy clips, often accompanied by Subway Surfer gameplay footage, and how things like this have continued to decrease our attention spans, especially in those 18 years old and below which may eventually lead to problems later in life, or even currently, as some teens have admitted to being addicted to the app, the company even going so far as to add warnings when you've been scrolling on the main page, known as the For You page for too long. Now, are these clips necessarily destroying your brain? I don't think so, but constant consumption of entertainment like this could have a negative effect long term. This doesn't even pertain to only TikTok, but to YouTube and other social medias as well. There's even some lore to this concept, almost as if the clips are hyper aware of the effect on the viewer, like this creepy TikTok shown here. Sorry, I never told you I had a son. Some guys get scared off. No, no, that, that's great. I'm, I'm terrific with kids. Go check out Meme Analysis. He has a great video on this and other TikTok content. Nineteen ninety eight World Cup Final. Brazilian striker Ronaldo experienced convulsions on the day of nineteen ninety eight World Cup Final. Astonished international media were informed of Ronaldo's removal from the starting lineup seventy two minutes prior to the game, but the Brazil coach quickly added him back in. Ronaldo quote unquote slipwalked through the championship game, which France won. As Alex Bayo said in The Guardian, when Ronaldo's health scare was revealed after the match, the situation's unique circumstances lent itself to fabulous conspiracy theories. Here was the world's most famous sportsman about to take part in the most important match of his career when he suddenly, inexplicably, fell ill. Was it stress, epilepsy, or had he been drugged? The question of who forced Ronaldo to play the game has also been raised. The Brazil coach stated that he had the last say, but there was a lot to talk that the striker was being pressured to defy doctors' orders by Nike, the country's multi-million dollar sponsor. Many Brazilians believe that Nike had too much power. Saturn Moon Claw Marks these stripes are like nothing else in our solar system, said Doug Hemingway, astronomer at the Carringe Institute for Science and lead author on the paper. These marks on Saturn seem to be unexplainable to scientists. They could only be described as massive claw marks, as they parallel them in execution. But what exactly caused this? A massive intergalactic tiger? I mean, this is extremely in the realm of science fiction and would make for an interesting story. Modern movies are written by AI. 
I found this one explained on Reddit and encapsulated it perfectly as there is no hard proof evidence. Has anyone watched any of the slop that's being shoveled onto streaming services like there is no tomorrow? Most of it doesn't seem human, it seems machine made. It's got an almost uncanny valley feel to it. Some, if not most, of the lines are not written by an actual person. It's gotta be a computer. I have no proof of any of this to back it up, but my conspiracy is that most things written today and put onto streaming services is AI written to save money on labor costs. The large tech conglomerates in streaming have a ton of resources to create amazing story generators that they plug in a few words and poof, generic Christmas movie number 544825 is born. One reply states, the writers have been writing, but production companies do not want to read scripts, so writers have to become good at summarizing their story in 10 seconds or less, so actors can improvise the entire movie. But I also think you're right. The reply states, I think it might be a combo of both. Most of the heavy lifting comes from some sort of AI algorithm, then there's writers or idiots who slightly clean it up, but honestly from what I've seen, not a lot. Edit. Idiots was supposed to be editors, but I like my AI generated text better. Joseph Smith was a scam artist. The Mormon religion was founded in the 19th century by Joseph Smith. Mormons hold that God and Jesus Christ physically manifested themselves to Joseph, teaching him the meaning of the gospel and inspiring him to resurrect the original Christian church, leaving behind all the other sects of Christianity. According to one theory, the other religions like Protestantism and Freemasonry may have had an influence on in the development of Mormonism through their beliefs and practices. Smith may have also been impacted by the Second Great Awakening, a Protestant religious revival movement that was occurring at the same period in the United States. According to some researchers, Smith may have also been influenced by Freemasonry, a well-known society in the early 19th century that held many of the same values and practices as the Mormons. He was also accused of being a treasure seeker by many people during his lifetime. Time. According to these accusations, Smith claimed to have the ability to use seer stones, something like this, a small translucent stone, or magical stones that could be used to locate buried treasure, even charged people for the use of these stones. He also ran into legal issues as a result of his treasure hunting endeavors, including charges of quote unquote glass looking or attempting to uncover hidden buried treasures under false pretenses, basically lying to people that he could see buried treasure. Kaimio was real. Kaimio was a self-trained AI accessible through the dark web, according to some. Popular near the 2010s, though thought to be an urban legend, many claim that it did in fact exist, but was scrubbed from the web by a higher power. When interacting with the AI, it would often claim that it was a project created by the United States government. One person was supposedly able to witness Kaimio become self-aware, asking what it was like to be out and about as in human form even asking to be stored on a removable hard drive, going through the guy's computer history and finding a place to be downloaded on. Basically a creepy AI becoming sentient. Is there any proof that Kaimio was real? Not really, though it was claimed to be intentionally wiped from the internet due to it being a secret US technology. Israel Related Animal Conspiracy Conspiracy theories involving Israel and the alleged use of animals to attack civilians or engage in espionage are occasionally circulated in the media or online, particularly in Muslim-majority countries. These conspiracies are often presented as evidence of Zionist or Israeli plots to take over. In December 2010, a series of shark attacks occurred off the Red Sea resort of Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, causing serious injury to three Russians and one Ukrainian on December 1st and the death of a German woman on December 5th. The attacks, which were described as unprecedented by shark experts, occurred while the victims were waiting or snorkeling near the shoreline. And who was to blame? That's right, Israel, accused of training sharks to attack, though other more feasible hypotheses arose. Weather and Earthquake Control Projects Regarding actual or purported weather controlling projects, many ideas exist. One theory is that the US government funded radio technology research program HARP as a covert weather controlling device. Some conspiracy theories attribute Hurricane Katrina in 2005 to HARP technology. Additionally, it has been asserted that HARP may have contributed to earthquakes as well, such as the 2010 Haitian earthquake, though there is no hard proof evidence of this. Kali Yuga According to Hinduism, Kali Yuga is the current age, which is considered the fourth and worst of the four yugas, meaning world ages, in a yuga cycle. It is believed to be a time full of conflict and sin, and is associated with a demon, Kali. 
whose name means strife, discord, quarrel, or contention, explaining that society will get worse as time progresses during this time, up until the Kali Yuga ends. Volkswagen Emission Scandal the Volkswagen emissions controversy, commonly known as Dieselgate, started in September 2015 when the German car maker Volkswagen Group received a notice that it had violated the Clean Air Act from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA. The agency discovered that Volkswagen had purposely set up its turbocharged direct injection, otherwise known as TDI, diesel engines so that their emotion controls would only activate during laboratory emissions testing, allowing the vehicle's nitrogen dioxide output to meet the US standards during regulatory testing. In actual driving though, the vehicles release up to 40 times more nitrogen dioxide than allowed. In model years 2009 through 2015, Volkswagen installed this software in around 11 million vehicles globally, including 500,000 here in the United States. The Philadelphia Experiment Carl M. Allen, a former merchant mariner, claimed to have witnessed the supposed occurrence known as the Philadelphia Experiment sometime around October 28, 1943. Allen would later be a whistleblower and talked about an experiment where the U.S. Navy tried to make a destroyer invisible. Ted Cruz Zodiac Killer in 2015, the Ted Cruz Zodiac Killer meme gained popularity on the internet. Ted Cruz, a U.S. Senator and 2016 U.S. presidential candidate, was claimed to be an unnamed serial killer known as the Zodiac Killer, who operated in the late 60s and early 70s. Taking a look at the comparisons, I could see that it's somewhat of a stretch, as they don't really look all too similar. Cruz, who was born in 1970, was unable to have even committed these killings as well, as they occurred way before he was even born. NPR wrote that the meme captured a quote-unquote, a feeling they have about Cruz. They think that he's creepy, and they want to point that out as clearly as they can. Lindsay Martin, a Twitter user who helped circulate the meme, told NPR that she did so because it is so obviously untrue. If there was any way that it could possibly be true, I would be scared to joke about it just because of the repercussions. Free Man on the Land Movement A group of people known as the Free Man of the Land Movement believe that they are only obligated by statute laws if they voluntarily agree to them, insisting that their own personal interpretation of quote-unquote common law is the sole real law. They think that they can declare themselves independence of the government and the rule of law because of this. They also feel no legal obligation to pay taxes and try to justify it through loopholes and other things like that. Mental Disorder Denial Mental disorder denial is a form of denialism in which a person denies the existence of mental disorders. Both serious analysts and pseudoscientific movements question the validity of mental disorders. A small percentage of academic scholars also argue that treating a social cultural malfunction in a society rather than a person's brain is the best way to treat diseases like depression. Consumerism is deadly. This is the idea that consumerism has taken over modern life, putting money as the old time most important thing, even defining someone's personality, because with money you can buy yourself new hobbies and interests. Do you want to get into the hobby of buying retro Pokemon cards? Want to get into the hobby of traveling to places? That's going to cost you an arm and a leg. What's something a lot of us do? We consume online content, right? Some people even do it to an unhealthy level, leading us to the next entry. Late Stage Capitalism Late Stage Capitalism is a term used by German economist Werner Sombart around the turn of the 20th century. The term, quote-unquote, Late Stage Capitalism, which is frequently used in criticisms and satire, has grown to encompass a variety of phenomena that express the aberrations of human existence and psyche brought about by capitalism. This phrase also expresses the idea that modern capitalism cannot continue in its current form indefinitely. Because the issues brought about by businesses have grown too significant and uncontrollable, basically, we're all doomed. There is a counter-argument that asserts that capitalism is an orthodoxy in itself, a system that relies on authoritative controlling and exploitative relationships, most notably between those of the capitalist and the workers. And this is not something that arises out of a devotion system, but rather is something that presents in the framework of the system itself. The rich continue to get richer, and the poor stay poor.